Hi, it's me once again, uh, bring you another Walking Dead blog, this time for, for Season 6, Episode 15, titled East. Now, this is the second last episode from the season finale, so it's going to, because it's starting to get crazy, so we'll start at the beginning. Uh, the beginning is, is a very, the intro was a short one, like it has some voices and, um, and gunshots going off, and then there was this stake right side of the car had a lot of blood coming out and then then there was blood on the on the gra on the gravel and then we go then we go quickly like to carol like she's packing up a lot of stuff she has the letter and eventually tobin comes upstairs giving this sob story about denise blah 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 Come on. And then Carol pretending to be happy to see him. And I'm like, oh, God. And then she pulls him in for a kiss. And then she woke up. And then Tobin was asleep. He had a, he was wearing a shirt. Thank God. I don't think... If you think they did the deed, I don't believe it. One bit. Because it would be, it would be the most disgusting thing I've ever seen in my life. And eventually Carol had the, like, she was sewing up something in her uh, coat sleeve. Like, we will know what it is down the road. And so Carol uh, got her jacket, she got her things, and just went out to Alexandria in the middle of the night. And then we see uh, Sasha up on watch, and, uh, and then uh, Rosita came to relieve one of the watchmen. And then all of us, and then... Um, Abraham comes and he and Sasha were looking at each other with these lovey dovey eyes. I'm just like, Abraham, come on. You already broke her heart. Do you have to flaunt your new girlfriend in front of her? I'm just like, oh. And so Sasha gave Abraham a cigar. And then when Abraham left, uh, Sasha, Rosita and S Sasha looked at Rosita very, 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 uh, very awkwardly so and eventually that was it and then there was Carl who was at the it was in the armory and eventually um he decided to take one of the guns so he got a gun and it has like a scripture on it like it's probably belonging to ne to the saviors or Negan so eventually Carl took it he was fascinated by it and then he took the gun and then we see Glenn and Maggie in the shower. Go like, oh boy, I'm just like, oh, come on. Go on, keep going, keep going, come on. There's hardly anything to see here. Okay, now, now that was passed. Then you see Daryl, like he had this rage in his eyes, like he wanted, he was, he looked at the name tag that Denise found of Dennis, uh, that was Denise's twin brother. And so, um, Eventually, he was seething and seething and knowing, doesn't know what the plan is. And then eventually, I'm um, thinking of a plan. And then we go to Rick and Michonne, who are in bed as usual, being their lovey-dovey selves. Judith is still asleep. And then she, after sharing an apple, um, she says, uh, we, we got to get out there, Maggie's. Putting up, Maggie's handing out our numbers. And so eventually she, he said, Rick will set, tells Michonne, we are going to take this place. Jesus came through. And then Rick says, and Michonne went, I, I know too. So eventually they were talking about this new th fight that they're going to go on. And then when eventually, then all of a sudden, then you see Glenn, Maggie, and Michonne walk up to around the guns where the guns were trying to f f put like, things like like putting weapons in a separate barrel and then all of a sudden they heard a motorcycle going and they looked and they were shocked and it was Daryl on the bike and then eventually they went Glenn went what is he doing and he goes oh don't tell me he's gonna Michelle went don't tell me he's gonna do it and then Daryl went off he opens the gate Mich Rosita says where are you going and he goes out and so eventually he was very, very angry. So he got on his bike and Abraham went, you tell me where you're going. Tell us where you're going. Tell us where you're going, he says. And then Daryl just took off on his bike without saying anything. 
<laughs> because I we know that Daryl is going to go after Dwight for killing Denise. And so when... Uh, and then Glenn went, he's making a big mistake. He's going to get himself killed. So eventually Glenn and Michonne hopped in the van and tried to go after Daryl and for making a big mistake. And then all of a sudden Abraham stopped and he says, you ain't going. You need room for two more people. And then Rosita went, no, I'm going. You stay in what? You stay, stay at my watch. You, you, you take over my watch. And eventually Rosita went in the van with a... Uh, Glenn and Michonne, and then they drove off. They drove out to find Daryl. Then uh, Tobin, good old Tobin, la di da di da di da di da, uh, answered uh, and went to Rick's house. Knocked on the door. Rick answered. Tobin gives Carol Daryl gives Rick the letter, and then Rick says, "Hello, do you know what time she left?" And she goes, "Tobin, I don't know. It was the middle of the night. I didn't get the letter in the morning." But I like, and then eventually. And they were discussing her, and then Morgan overheard it. And then Morgan overheard, and then and then Michonne and, and Sasha were on watch. I mean, uh, Abraham and Sasha were on watch. And then Tobin looked outside, and he says, there are two cars missing. There was one near, like, between two houses. And and like and Rick went, Carol knows, knows what she's doing. Like, she, she can hide her tracks and all that. And then eventually maybe she took one of them and then uh morgan went i'm going with you and then rick went wait eventually and then he announces keep the gates closed nobody is to leave this gate you keep an eye on carl and judith and if there's a, if there's trouble we go down without a fight with a fight so eventually morgan and rick sent went off to find carol and so eventually, uh, then we go to Carol, who's driving the car with the spikes on it. And then eventually, she was driving, not knowing where she was going. And then you see a truck coming by her, and they were like full of saviors, and they were like shooting at the car and all that. And he said, and they said, she stopped coming. She says, "Come out with your hands up." And so she got the hand. She got her hands, and he says, uh, "Please, uh, it's just me." So eventually she got out of the car. It's just me. I don't have, I have, don't, don't hurt me. I have a car and a knife, but I used to kill dead for dead walker, for the dead. And she turns around saying, I'm, I'm, in, I'm honest. You hear me, blah, blah, blah. And then eventually, and he says, we want to know where, who you are, where we're, we come from. And this one guy named Hero is one of the saviors. And then uh, Carol, but Carol cited, I don't know. You don't know who I am or where I'm from. I'm just a, I'm just a girl, a woman passing through to, uh, from town to town. It's Nancy from Montclair. And I'm just like, good job, Carol. And then eventually, like, then Carol went, you don't have to do this. You don't have, no one has to get hurt. Just go, take it, go where you're going and no one's going to get hurt. And then they, they were looking for this place that was full of gates and, they say, and they mentioned Alexandria because they know where the cars are, where there are spikes on the cars and all that. And then Carol went, Carol started to cry, don't panic, don't, she was panicking. He says, you go, just go back, please. And she's begging, to, she wants to live and all that. And all, she was begging and begging and begging. She didn't want to shoot any of them. But eventually they got her the guns and Hero, one of the walk, one of the saviors says, well, someone's got to get hurt. It's gonna be her. Shot there, and but eventually Carol took out a. Uh, there were shots all over the saviors, and eventually half of the saviors went right on down. And it turned out that Carol sewed a gun in her coat sleeve, which was a brilliant idea because if she hasn't had that sleep, hadn't had that gun, she would have been dead by now. But eventually, uh, she, eventually, um. She got down, and then one of the men came out and said, "Come out, come out wherever you are." And eventually, uh, Carol on one side of the car, and this other dude was on the other side of the car. And then all of a sudden, uh, Carol got this, uh, got the dagger, and then stabbed the guy in the heart. And that is where all the blood came from. And then Carol went. Uh, and then Carol. Uh, 
grabbed, grabbed the guy's gun and started, and then to point to this guy, a hero who is, and says, come out now. And eventually a uh, hero came out and then he was about to draw his gun or his knife and then Carol just shot him. And eventually uh, she left the, she left the, left the rope. She just was frightened and then, and then eventually uh, Rick and Morgan, we go to Rick and Morgan now and they were driving up east to uh, try to find Carol and then they had this conversation and they say, I know what she went through, blah, 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 blah. And it says, she may have headed east. And he goes, he may, she may have headed west. And goes, no, she had, I know she headed east. And eventually, uh, one of the saviors uh, just was, was the surviving savior, got up with a shoulder injury. She, he opens up the door and then he was limping and limping. And then eventually he sees a car coming which was Rick and Morgan. So eventually he went and hid in the bushes. And so, um, and so um, Rick and Morgan came along and then he, Rick went to this guy, Hero, and then he grabs him and, uh, um, and Hero, who was dying of loss of blood, and Rick goes, where is she? And then Rick, and then, and then Hero was about to die anyway, so he just stabs him in the brain. And then Morgan came along, and then there's, he sees the other walker eating one of the savior, one of the saviors who turned into a walker, eat one of the one of the guys, and eating the blood, the guy who got killed. And so eventually Morgan just boom, boom, went with a kind of stick and knocked the and killed the walker. And then eventually, um, and he talked about Carol. Uh, you sent her away, did? Yeah, you need. Carol, why did Carol leave? And he says, she says, Carol's a, Carol's a force of nature. I can't believe Carol would do this. I'm very proud of her, Rick said. She's a force, good force of nature. And then she sees, they see the trail where Carol may go, and then they decided to follow the trail. And then all of a sudden, we all know that Carol left the rosary down on the gravel. And then all of a sudden, as soon as Rick and Morgan were heading up the trail, uh, the the other say the surviving savior got out of the bushes and then tried to make and made a made an escape for it. Then we go to uh, Glenn, Michonne, and Rosita who are looking for Daryl because Rosita knew where Daryl w- was gonna go to look for Dwight. And then they all stopped, dropped off, and they all stopped. They looked at the tracks, and then Rosita pointed to Glenn and Michonne. But the blood on the track saying that's where Denise died. And then Daryl went, I'm sure he left a track. And then Michonne went and buried, brought up some branches and he had his motorcycle buried in the branches. So eventually he went out. He didn't want anybody finding him. So uh, eventually Daryl went, Glenn said to Rosita, Daryl's going to get himself killed. We gotta get him. We gotta send him home. We gotta try to find him. There, there, we, there, it's gonna, there has to be another way he's gonna get himself killed. So eventually uh, they went down the track with trying to find her, and then all of a sudden you see Daryl out in the field tracking, uh, finding Dwight, and eventually he heard something, and uh, and then eventually he grabbed his crossbow and he sh- and he shot and he hits hits a tree right near Rosita's head and Rosita grabbed the grabbed the arrow and he he told she told Daryl watch where you're shooting asshole and he goes I am and why you why you have to you didn't have to come here and eventually Daryl was all mad and then Glenn said Michelle says this is not the way to do it you you're not doing this for her. You're doing this for yourself. And he says, tell me about the, uh, Dwight. And he goes, God, when I, and Daryl went, when I was separated from Abraham and Sasha uh, and Bush by them, I landed into this forest for, for the burnt walkers, burnt forest. Uh, saw these two girls and, and a guy, and there's this guy, put a gun to my head, tied me up, tried to help him, and I should have killed him. And he says, Glenn went, you're not doing this for her. You're doing this for you. 
And then Glenn and Michonne, Michonne begged Daryl, please, please come back to Alexandria. We need your help. Please, we can work through this. We can work through this. And then Daryl went, I can't. And then eventually, I just can't. And then eventually, Daryl went on his merry way. And then Rosita went, I can't too. And then D Rosita followed Daryl. And then uh, Glenn and Michonne went there, went another way. And they were talking. And then they started talking about how how they're going to fight for the fight and everything. They talked about life and all that. Like Denise and knowing that it's that they don't have a doctor in Alexandria anymore. And then all of a sudden you hear this whistle. And it turns out there were, there were, Glenn and Michonne were surrounded by a bunch of saviors. And then all of a sudden Dwight comes upon with a gun pointing at Glenn. And he said, hi, I'm Dwight. And that was it. And so then we go right back to, let's go to Rick and Morgan again. They were like following the trail and he was talking about uh, how he, Rick Morgan was saying, you ban, you took, you sent Carol away because she killed two people in your prison. And she said, I went, he said, now he regrets it now because they were dying anyway for this disease. If she wouldn't step up to it, I would have. And, um, Carol, you, you want to find Carol because you need her. And she says, no, Carol's my family. And eventually they were talking about her and um, saying, now Rick's regretting to set, that he sent away Carol and he wants to appall and he could have done it differently. And now Rick's now showing remorse. Thank you. We knew this wasn't going to be solved yet. Come on. And then Rick finally realized he was wrong. Ding, ding, ding. And so eventually, then they, then moments later, they see this female walker, uh, and then they saw, and they walk, and then Rick went, that's not her. And then eventually, uh, there, and then Morgan put her down, and then, and then, and then Morgan went, she must have been dead for, she must have died a day ago. And then Rick says, okay. And so Rick stabs her in the brain, and then she says, this is where may she may have died or something. And she says, no, I know Carol's still alive. And eventually they, uh, they, they went up to this barn and then they see this uh, guy dressed in armor, which I assume he is from the kingdom. And eventually he was attacking walkers. And then Rick and Morgan got the, got, Rick says, come out of the barn now. And he says, don't worry, just go. There's many of them. I'm just looking for my horse. And then eventually there you see a lot of walkers going and then Rick and then the and then this and then this guy in the armor came out and Rick's tried to shoot him but Morgan got him out of the way and he, when the gun went off and then Rick was starting they were starting to kill all the walkers and uh, the man with the armor just ran and then uh, Morgan went Morgan went he was a man trying to find his horse and then eventually he says, I, and Rick got on the spears and says, I don't take chances anymore. And eventually they, they got into, they got into, and um, Morgan went, I'm going to go, he says, go back home. I'm going to go find Carol. And he says, I'm going with you. And he says, no, you know, I knew, we know that all life is precious. And then he talked about the wolf, how Owen, how he, had Owen down the basement, he says, she, he saved her life, and Denise saved Carl's life. Everything gets a return. All life is precious. And he says, okay, fine. So he says, he he told Rick to take, Rick told Morgan to take his gun, and Morgan went, I don't need it. And then Morgan went, and Rick went, take it. And he went, okay. Because you know, Morgan, you may need the gun, because, uh, you now you know that all life, all life is not all that precious. And then, Mich and then Rick said to Morgan before they go in their separate ways. Michonne, by the way, Michonne did take your last protein bar. And he goes, I know. And eventually he says, but if I'm missing, don't come looking for me. 
and then eventually um, Rick, and, Rick and Morgan went their separate ways. Then, then we're going to go back to Alexandria. Uh, Maggie was looking tired and Enid was in the pantry and she said, and Enid wanted to help out. And he says, I got some, there was a lot to do and all that. And he says, Maggie, Enid went, don't worry. And then Enid, and she says, I'm going to get some lunch. And then Enid went to grab a jar of pickles. And then she says, I'm taking your shift. And he says, you don't have to. And he goes, yes, I do. You need, you need your rest. Just go up, put your feet up and eat some pickles. And he went, okay. So eventually Enid took watch and Maggie was resting and eating pickles. Then moments later, uh, Scott told Enid that Maggie was looking for her. And eventually Ma Enid knocked on Maggie's door and Maggie went, Maggie had like a pair of scissors in her hand. And then she opened the door. She said, Ma it said, Maggie, Scott told me you were looking for me. And Maggie went, I need more help. I just, I need another helper. Eventually she hands the scissors to en Enid, come in. And then you see, next thing you see Enid cutting Maggie's hair. And I'm just like, why? Like she was very beautiful with long hair and all that. And eventually, like, like she looked really great with the short bob when they introduced her in the sec Maggie in the second season. And then as soon as Ma Enid finished cutting Maggie's hair, uh, she looked in the mirror and then Enid went and smiled. And Enid went, I like it, but why? He goes, she goes, I have to keep on going. I don't want anything standing in my way. And I guess that's why, like, she didn't want to, like, she needed to step up. She wanted to become more of a leader role, so that's why the short haircut. And then all of a sudden, Enid went, then Maggie started feeling funny and says, What's wrong, e What's wrong, Maggie? Did I cut it too short? And she goes, No, you did fine. You did good. And then May, and then May, and she said, I used to cut my father's hair. Then all of a sudden, she doubled over in pain. Eventually, she's having some problems with her pregnancy. And then she, it was like, I would get this. Okay, it's either she's losing, A, she's losing the baby. B, she has a pen, she, she needs to get her appendix out. Or C, she had, or C, she may have food poisoning by Enid, poisoning her pickles. We don't know. We'll have to find out in season seven. And then uh, Rick came back uh, with, came back without Morgan, and uh, Rick told Abraham, uh, Morgan's still out there, and he said, "Is Michelle back?" And R Abraham goes, "She's still out there." And eventually they had some conversation, and and then Abraham said one of his famous punchlines again, saying, "The whole world." The whole world's gonna shoot out a kill, shoot out a new asshole. And eventually, they were both looking outside the gate. Eventually, uh, waiting for Michonne and them to come back. And then, all of a sudden, in, in the ending, you see Glenn and Michonne uh, gagged up and tied up, and all the saviors uh, were surrounding the fire and all that, and um, building a fire. And then you see. And you see Daryl coming from behind the bushes with Rosita behind him. And then eventually Glenn saw Daryl. And and then Daryl went, shh, told him not to say a word, to be, to be quiet. And then Glenn started to panic and all that. Glenn, Daryl got his crossbow, Rosita got the gun. And then all of a sudden you hear, hi, Daryl. And it was Dwight. And eventually, uh, another savior got behind Rosita, uh, put the gun down, and um, and then Daryl turned around, and then Daryl turned around, and then Dwight bang, shot Daryl in the shoulder, and then they went black, and there was blood all over the camera screen, and then he said, "You'll be all right," and that was the end. Now I think this episode was getting very exciting, but. We have one more episode left for the season. That's the season finale of Last Day on Earth. And it's going to be like four more weeks before we start the season seven of The Walking Dead. So eventually that's all I have to say about that. But next time I will, uh, I, we will discuss the season, the blog, my season finale, the blog, 
on episode 16, season 6, entitled Last Day on Earth. So eventually, uh, that's it for me. So, reminder, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen this episode, watch it first before you come to my channel. So eventually, if you want to leave a comment, that's wonderful. If not, I'm glad that you watched me. So, remember the rules. No name calling, no rude comments, and no disrespect. Anyways, this is me signing off, and uh, have a good evening. See you soon.